So I thought I would cheat and sort of sneakily skip a day here with my everyday posting uh, because my last video was posted sort of between Monday and Tuesday and I needed Tuesday to write my blog post. Are you reading my blog? Read it. And anyway, um, so I thought, yeah, I'll just, you know, put my next one out on Wednesday and nobody would notice. Yeah, so it didn't work. And now I'm two days behind. Um, yeah, yesterday was not a good day here. Um, not a good day at all. Um, but you're going to have to read about it in my next week's post. <laughs> um, but anyway, back to what is now a year and six days behind. But we shall catch up. Um, and today's video is day three. Uh, recall day two, we ended with the boys waking up crying and achy and needing more kalpo. But yeah, so day three. Enjoy! <laughs> Thursday, 19th March, day three. The boys woke up well and even joined in with my workout. Listen, I've said this before. Any parent would be glad to see previously ailing children happy and energetic. It's just we have to be here for 14 days because of their illnesses in the house all the time. Surely it's only fair for the sickness to stick around to substantiate the fuss. But no. Three days in and they were revving. I was determined to be responsible today. No TV until 5pm at the earliest. Schools were going to be closing and I needed to get into a routine. If I didn't start now, I never would. If I wasn't disciplined, they wouldn't learn to be either. But first, I needed a cup of tea. I started a game of racing toy cars, played with them for a few minutes and then slipped quietly away. That was how to do it. it it's like at the park. You give them a big enough push so that they continue to go back and forth while you sort something else out. You plan to check your text, but it's usually to rescue another child from the wrong end of the slide. But anyway... By the time they notice that your pushing arm is gone and that they're slowing down, you're back and push. I managed to dodge them for half an hour by starting them off on game after game, racing cars, packing a suitcase and going on holiday, building towers, fighting over a paper toilet roll. <laughs> then for me, it was breakfast, news, copper, online search for activity sheets, print out sheets, decide to do something completely different, and then I was ready to face them again. Good thing too. They had noticed the slowing swing. If by the end of this strange time, I have settled comfortably into the habit of putting aside the less important stuff and just spending real time playing with the boys, there would lie the blessing in the crisis. Once I sat down with them, I couldn't understand why I had often struggled in the past to put aside the, I just need to finish this one last thing and just give them my full attention. GW, also self-isolating with B, M and E, had shared her genius idea of using a Noah's Ark theme. As she suggested, it was brilliant to compare our situation with that of Noah, his family and the animals stuck in a boat, not venturing out for 40 days and nights. So with the boys, I recall the story and then we counted up to 40 in twos and then one by one. We talked about how the Ark residents were very much like us. Uh, they learned and promptly forgot the word isolation. Uh, we tried to recreate the sounds of the rain uh, the Ark cruisers must have been listening to. And then we imagined what they might have been doing all that time. Just sitting there and doing nothing, Timmy declared. <laughs> Thankfully, there were no questions about the drowning people on the outside. Most of all, though, we talked about who was with them as they waited in the ark, who took care of them and made sure they weren't scared. And we agreed that Jesus was with us now, too. And we thanked him for his presence and peace. We then decided to find among their toys pairs of different animals to bring to the ark. <coughs> that is to say, sofa. And yes, there was a pair of cars. 
After they had cut out animals to stick on an arc drawing, the teary tantrums over the tiniest troubles made it clear that it was nap time. And miracles upon miracles, and with the help of Lou's big daddy voice, <laughs> I convinced all three to nap at the same time. It was just as well because I needed time to make lunch and prep for dinner, as well as set the playroom up for painting. Painting. I ask you, who sent me to create this kind of punishment for myself? But they had asked, and I was in a fun mummy mood. I did not dare disappoint. But, as I said, before that, there was lunch to make. Ah, speaking of lunch, that reminds me. So yesterday, day two, Mama messaged me to ask, you know, what other food we needed because she was speaking to Auntie A, who was heading to the Nigerian food store. I was emphatic. We did not need any more food. Our fridge, freezers, and cabinets were full of food. And I was beginning to worry that, you know, the food would spoil before we got to it. I reminded her that the day before, day one, she had sent two separate people to us with plantains. We did not need any more food. Absolutely no more. Not even a morsel. Auntie A showed up a few hours later. I have food for your mother for you. Come and open the door. There were plantains, yams, three kinds of peppers, one of which I didn't recognize, loads of garlic, because apparently they had the capacity to cure COVID-19, ginger, two kinds of oranges, bananas, lemons, leaves I could not identify, chicken, and mutton. I needn't have bothered. When this grandmother hears her boys are unwell or, you know, just existing, there's no stopping her giving. Anyway, back to day three. I had no space to freeze the food and the plantains were in danger of getting too soft. So I decided to cook as many meals as possible with the ingredients I had. Thankfully, the boys napped for ages. The rest of the day wasn't too bad. Painting was pretty painless. I wondered why I had avoided it for so long. I stripped them to their pants Put, on, put an old bed sheet down and then a plastic dust sheet, relics from my home birth kit. And I put a different painting tool in each pot of paint and then I just let them rip. A few rainbows, handprints and Technicolor arcs later, we were ready for CBBs. Nobody has ever been so glad to see Dougie and the squirrels. Where was Timmy in all this? On me a lot. On them too. On everything really. He's doing very well though and I'm glad that I am forced to take time to talk to him and just watch him learn to, to talk back. It's almost midnight and my throat has been aching for a few hours. It hurts to swallow and either side of the base of my chin feels swollen. I do not want to be sick. School has sent a home learning pack. Pastor A has kindly helped deliver the plastic table and chairs I got from Argos and I want to hit the ground running tomorrow. I better put an end to day three. I hope you enjoy that. See you tomorrow for day four, and I promise no more skipping.